jobs to start us off. Um, thank you everyone for joining us today. It's a real delight to be doing a second round of these Getting Through the Cracks conversations. Um, last year, Theatre Alibi hosted a, a, a free webinar series called Getting Through the Cracks, and the feedback was so positive about these. It, it, starting conversations with renowned theatre makers for young audiences, talk about experiences of creating work during the pandemic, that it felt like there was real impetus to do more. So we're here for a, for a second round. And I'm delighted to be joined today by Randy and Virla, who are going to talk a bit about their artistic process at Bronx. Um, but just before we get into an introduction and have a really juicy look at some of their artistic practice with their show, Rita, I just want to talk a little bit about how today's going to work. Um, so we're here for an hour, folks. It's going to be interactive. There will be question and answer in the second half. Um, but just to start us off in that spirit of interactivity, if people are able to click on the chat button down below, and just let us know that um, who you are and where you're from so we can get a sense about who is here and listening today. That would be really fantastic, thank you. Um, and while you're doing that, I'm just gonna give a little bit of information. So today's event is hosted by the fabulous Theatre Alibi. Um, I'm really privileged to be on the board of Theatre Alibi. I also run an organization called Doorstep Arts and I work at the University of Exeter. So these Getting Through the Cracks events are co-hosted between Theatre Alibi, University of Exeter and the International Association of Theatre for Children and Young People. Um, and for anyone who doesn't know anything about Theatre Alibi's work, I just want to say a couple of lines because I think it's quite important, their kind of history in the field and the reason for these conversations. So Theatre Alibi are based in Devon in the southwest of England. Uh, for nearly 40 years they've been creating work with and for people of all ages, performing in all sorts of places from theatres to village halls, libraries and on the streets. And each year the company tours extensively to primary schools, reaching around 12,000 children. And for many of those children, an Alibi show will be their first experience of theatre. So it feels really right to me that Alibi is a leader here in the UK and Children's Theatre are hosting these conversations. And we're delighted that we're able to welcome international guests to expand those conversations outside of our UK boundaries. So um, Vila and Randy from Bronx are joining us today and Bronx is Brussels Dutch language theatre for young audiences. And we're gonna hear a bit about uh, one of their own productions, which was a show called Rita. Thank you to those of you that are introducing yourselves in the chat, keep going, don't be shy. Uh, if you're having imposter syndrome, introduce yourself anyway. It's really important that we know who you are. If you're sat there, you can just say, hello, I'm a student. That's lovely for us to get a sense about who's here and listening today. Thank you. Um, so we're going to let Vila and Randy talk a little bit in a minute. They're going to share some video. Um, and then what I'd really love us to be able to do is throw this open to some question and answer um, and have a bit of a conversation. And there's two ways that you, if you're here in the audience today, can participate. One of them is that you can click on the Q&A box down the bottom and just write a question in a Q&A box and I can read your question out for you. But if you're feeling brave, you can also raise your hands. Um, and if you raise your hands, we will come and call on you and you can ask your question yourself. And that would be so lovely um, to hear from people in their own voices, their own questions. At the very end of the session today, we're gonna share a link so that conversations can continue on in a kind of a Padlet format. Um, and that will be a space where you can maybe share contact details with people or, or pick up conversations and carry them forward if that feels useful to you. Um, we're hoping that these conversations serve as catalyzing spaces for us to connect up more, to have these critical conversations more widely in the field. Um, so that's the hope from today. And that all depends on your action to make that bit happen. I think that's all the housekeeping things I need to say. Um, so I'd just like to introduce Vila and Randy just a little bit, and then I'm going to pass over to you two. Um, so Vila Kirkhoven um, started at Bronx in 2004 with responsibility for international touring and uh, coaching and networking and a few years later she had the opportunity to lead various Bronx productions and coordinated the art educational operations studio Bronx and in 2014 she took over the artistic management of the house. Um, so we're delighted that you can join us today, Bella. And Randy Devlika is a choreographer, dancer, theatre maker and actor. He graduated from the Flemish Dance Academy in 1994 and masters the crossover between dance, theatre and performance like nobody else. And apparently has been at the <laughs> hospital today. Have you been at the hospital today? No, yes, but I'm, I'm working at the hospital. I, I'm, also, I'm also a massage therapist. Oh, just on the side. 
Yes. <laughs> so I'm, 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 yes, I'm massaging like 45 people. Like <laughs> That is amazing. That's the best yes. part of the introduction ever. <laughs> Um, I, I can't possibly lead out the list of all the productions that Randy's worked on because it's so extensive. Um, but it's just such a delight to have you here today. So I'm going to actually go on mute and let you two talk a little bit to us about your artistic practice. Um, we're going to hopefully share some video. And then after about 15 minutes or so, I'll come back in and help with a bit of question and answer and a bit of discussion. If that's okay, okay, good. So okay. I'll pass over to you two. Off you go. Okay. Okay, welcome uh, everybody. Um, uh, I'm Verle and thank you for the introduction. It was really nice to hear it. Um, we are bronze, uh, Brussels-based uh, theatre for young audiences and we make like three, four productions, co-productions a year. But it's, um, we, we, we don't have like uh, in-house artists that are continuously connected to bronze. Uh, but every year we ask uh, some artists to come and create a show uh, for Bronx. And, and so we have like every year three, four artistic teams uh, that are come, coming to Bronx to work uh, for us. And Randy de Vliegen is one of the choreographers, theater makers who made already a lot of shows for Bronx because we like him and we like his work. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's uh, the, the function of Bronx is that it's a theatre company without in-house artists, but that uh, the artistic team of Bronx we are like a more function like an outside eye, and so we help a lot of uh, artists to uh, make and create the shows they want to make. And so today we are going. Um, to talk about one uh, show uh, specifically, and that's Rita. And the best way to do it is to ask Randy, who made the show, <laughs> to talk about it. So we are going to show a lot of scenes and fragments because that's more easy to talk about afterwards. Yes. Uh, so you can also ask a lot of questions about Bronx, but I think it's better to do it after have seen some uh, videos. Okay. Now, Randy. <laughs> Okay, hi everybody. Uh, so my name is uh, Randy or Randy in English. Um, so I made a production um, Rita with Bronx and actually Rita, the, the character Rita comes from a previous production which was uh, Football on Stilettos and the production Football on Stilettos was actually a research more about uh, appearance towards people, how your appearance uh, changes uh, by behavior, by body language, by putting on a costume on, or, or glasses or specific shoes or uh, the way you talk. And one of the characters in football on, on Stilettos was actually Rita, but she was a more advanced character because she was a full costume character in the, that production. Her appearance was not so long. But every time after the production, uh, after people saw football on stilettos, they, they said this Rita character is, is so rich in, in, in imagination and in, um, there is such a, such a world behind her still. Um, and, and actually that reaction came back very, very often. And so Chef Frank Hestel, who, was, who is the, the co-director of uh, Rita and football on stilettos, so both of we, we decided, okay, we, we should make an entire performance around this one character, Rita, because she's such a, a rich personage. And voila, so we did. And, and so the, the character, the personage, Rita, existed on day one of the production, which was very exceptional. I never started out with a, a personage or a character being so defined already. Um, and then we could start the research around this this woman. <laughs> yes. So I, I don't know. Maybe it's it's a good time to show the the trailer now. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Pilar, Pilar? could you start the trailer? Yes. Yes. I'll, I'm on it now. Okay. Oh, 
So that was the trailer. It's 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 a good compilation of the performance. Actually, the performance is. Ah. Ooh. Is everybody hearing me? Hello. Yeah, we can hear you fine, Randy. I think ah, okay, sorry. Yes. A little bit of uh, sound still from Pilar's screen. Keep uh, <laughs> no. So basically, the performance is about the relationship between so Rita, this elderly woman, who is um, and her caretaker. Um, uh, Martino so and he's in between a nurse and more like a luxury caretaker because he's there the whole time and then Rita um, her world goes between the everyday life of being um, nursed and her imagination partly but also her loneliness and maybe there is there are some traces of dementia or um, um, Alzheimer. I mean, some some elderly disease that that crosses through the performance, and we try to evoke that with with yeah different kinds of of. Uh... Also, the thing is in in the in the more fantasy parts where Rita tries to escape in her own fantasy or own word world. Um, She's a lot more fit. She's she's faster. She's so then at, at those moments my my physical abilities as forty seven year old dancer are uh, suitable. Yes. So <laughs> um, maybe it's good to to show a first fragment um, or another scene out of the performance where the relationship between uh, Rita and Martino is being. Uh, you have a nice ex exposure of that. Maybe let's, if, if Pilar, if you could show the, the first scene. Yes. Geen meubels verplaatsen hè, in uw eentje. Draag dat maar aan mij. Hè. Draag dat maar aan mij. Hè. Sorry. Rita, Rita, pas op. Pas op, pas op. Blijf staan. Blijf staan. Blijf staan. Blijf staan. Ik kom naar u. Even volhouden op. Even volhouden op. Ja, oké. Okay. Ik pak u vast hier. Ja, oké. Okay. En dan gaan we rustig laten zakken. Rustig laten zakken. Ja. Rustig, kalm, kalm. Hè. Voilà, dat hebben we weer goed gedaan. Hè. Geen meubels verplaatsen hè, in uw eentje. Draag dat maar aan mij. Hè. Draag dat maar aan mij. Ja, goed. Allee. Ik zal de tafel even goed neerzetten. Voilà. Rita, Rita, pas op. Pas op. Pas op. Uw polsen. Hè. Allee, kom. Hè. Geef maar aan mij. Geef maar aan mij. Ja. Als je iets wilt verplaatsen, vraag maar gewoon aan mij, hè? dan doe ik dat voor u. Kom, Martino, hè? even. Rita, Rita, wat ga je doen? Rita, hè? wat wil je? Wat wil je? Heb je dorst? Heb je dorst? Ik zal het even voor u pakken. Goed? Ja? Oké, okay. ik zit hier op tafel. Hè? Voilà, zeg. 
Eh, es que así es. Ah, ita ni 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 paso, paso, paso. Eh, que llamamos. Tom. Mat mae maar, eh? Half glasje of een vol glasje? Eh? Half glasje? Vol glasje? Half glasje? Vol glasje? Half glasje? Eh? Allee, we zullen beginnen met een half glasje. Voilà. En dan kun je altijd bijdragen, eh? Goed. Allee. Zeg, Rita, Rita, kom eens, kom eens. Yes, still there. So actually, in this in this first scene, it, it's quite the beginning of the performance. The, it's it illustrates the relationship between Rita and um, Martino. How how dependent she is on her caretaker, um, and and that relationship is being pulled throughout the whole performance. Um, in the beginning, you have the impression that Rita is, is actually still able to do everything herself, that she doesn't need her caretaker or that she is physically still fit enough to do everything, that, that her mind is still okay. Um, but throughout the performances, you, you can see that, that she really needs him. Um, and that that was one part of the investigation. Um, so, voila, that's that's basically the, 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 that relationship. And, and uh, maybe it's good to to see the second. Um, I don't know, Vila, you want to add something? No, it's uh, it's about the position of the caretaker. Also, it's like um, she in in the beginning, the audience feels a little bit. Uh, like the caretaker is 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 um, considering Rita as a as a really small child with no uh, um, yeah really Rita don't do this Rita don't do that Rita you cannot do this Rita you're too old and then the audience is more like against Martino more like Martino stop Rita is good enough but then during the performance you start to know. That, that he only wants to help her, and it's a lot of love in, uh, and that's why that's so nice about performance that it has an evolution. That you're like an audience, you feel uh, the love between those two, but that it's a difficult position, a difficult position for the caretaker, but also for Rita, because she's a little bit. Let me let me drink, let me put the table, let me do this, and that's. The difficult relation between a caretaker and, and an elderly, an older person. Yes, yes. But it's good to show the next um, scene. Yes, yeah. let's do that. Okay. Actually, that scene was without any text. The almost all of the music in the performance is opera music because we. That was also. Uh, that was already the the fact in in um, football on stiletto that that uh, we wanted to communicate that Rita really, really, really is a big fan of opera music. So every escape for her out of reality 
um, happens with with uh, um, opera music. So um, there you saw another another scene in this connection between uh, Rita and and Martino, um, but without text. So basically, uh, every time she has the opportunity to escape these everyday actions, she she goes into um, yeah in her fantasy. Yeah, Fela, any? Thing you want to add? No, no, no. That's true, and that's basically the um, the mix in the show that you um, that you see the daily routine uh, of a caretaker coming in. Hello, Rita, and he does really every day the same things, like giving her the medicine, medicine, and all these the same structures. And she she sometimes is there physically with him, but in a snatch she snatch she can be somewhere else and then it can be really a poetic um, um fantasy opera world and then you see the rita she was when she was young yeah yeah uh, so you see her uh past a little bit when she was really good she loved opera maybe she was a good dancer maybe <laughs> and so it's like uh, oh she's always returning in her fantasy to her past yeah. and martino plays the role of now what's happening now and that's all the time in it switches all the time uh, in the show and i think it's uh, you the third scene is you can see it really the, the mix of the both worlds it starts in the here and now, and then it slowly, um, and sometimes Martino uh, is, is also involved in the fantasy. Yeah, yeah. And that makes it very, uh, I think it's the next scene we are going yeah. to show, that makes it like, uh, it's not the caretaker against Rita, they are in, in it together. And they are trying to make life more beautiful even if it's in fantasy yeah that yeah <laughs> but we can show the next scene and then yeah. it will be clear eh, yeah. i think yeah. it's yeah okay Rita, nog vijf minuutjes, ja? Ik ben bijna klaar. Okay. I um I'm 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 sorry but I'm I, I um 
I will have to leave in a few minutes the the conversation because I, I could only be there till till 130 I mean 230 here so I don't know if anybody has a question already maybe it's good to should we pause there then, Randy, and then perhaps we can carry on the Q&A with um, Viola after you. Yeah, okay, okay. That's okay. It's all right, no problem. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing those clips. I think it's incredibly helpful to see the work. Um, I, f I find that last clip especially really moving to watch. Mm -hmm. There's just a lovely sense of um, aesthetic and ambition and play mm -hmm. in that. Um, I have lots of questions, and I suspect people who are here have lots of questions too. What I might do is share the Padlet with you later, Andy, as well, um, that we're going to share at the end so that perhaps you can uh, yeah. ask questions later on, if that's okay. Yes. Does that sound yeah, all right? Would... Yeah. Yes. Um, so if people have some questions that they'd like to pose, you can either type them into the Q&A box down the bottom, um, or you can pop your hands up. Um, I know that Pilar, who's the producer for Alibi, who's helped to put this event together, she was telling me that when she saw this piece live, at the end, about half the audience were clapping and about half the audience were sat like this, a bit <laughs> uncomfortable. Um, okay. Feeling a bit, I think, like a bit uncomfortable with some of the relationship perhaps between the two characters. And I don't know if that was your intention with the piece. I don't know if that was also the reaction of every audience or if it was just that one that Pilar happened to be sat in. Um, was the intention to raise questions about the care system and carers? Was was there that intentionality behind the piece of work originally? Not not in the first place. I mean, the, in, in, um, actually, we the, the first thing was to really investigate the the relationship between the two of them and then for me specifically how I could interpret somebody of that age um, you know in within my ability of of a dancer of a mover of a, of a physical actor and then through the 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 process yeah we bumped of course into subjects that are quite typical for that relationship you know you have to eat you have to drink you have to take care of yourself you have to don't put yourself in danger um so yeah it, it's it's almost yeah inevitable that that you bump into those kind of situations so we didn't do it on purpose but that's how it came out mm. yeah yeah um, I'm really aware of time, Randy, so if you need to go, we can say goodbye. I'm, Thank I'm you afraid so. so. Um, and we'll pick up conversations with you afterwards in other formats, so please do go if you need to go. But yes. Verla, so see okay. you soon. Thank and you take so care. much. Okay, um, bye-bye. Verla, are you able to speak to that question at all about, um, about how young audiences may have reacted to that piece in terms of their interpretations oh, as well? I, yeah. Uh, we played a lot with this show, Rita, we played for all ages. That's really incredible. So we played for children from year, eight years old, uh, school, a lot of school performances, but also only for adults. And we also played for intergenerational, which works really good. Uh, like uh, I saw it also with my parents and you know like if you have the mix of grandparents with children and of course the reactions are quite um, different because it's you, maybe you, you didn't see it on, on screen now but the piece is also very funny yeah. so it's a mix of um, humor and sadness so sometimes it happens when you have a family audience with a lot of uh, ge different generations that the children are laughing a lot because they really like Rita. Because Rita has a quite a rebellion character. She eats chips, she does things she cannot do. And Randy is, uh, uh, Martino is more like, the, no, 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 Rita, watch out, watch out. So they are more like a fan of Rita. Uh, the children. That's why at the end of the show they are applauding. It's also because it ends with a, a very s spectacular dance and then the sadness. And the children, they, they feel the sadness, but they feel more the joy of the rebellion of Rita. And the parents and the grandparents, they feel more the sadness. 
And that's why you have uh, always both reactions. Uh, because you, in your head, as a, you have to accept that sadness and humor that they can be in, in cha it changes all the time in the show. And so it's, it depends on how you look at the show. Some think, some, it depends also on your private situation. Some, some, sometimes you come out of the show and you say it's so sad that she's alone and she has to wait for somebody to take her by the hand and, and go for a walk in the park because otherwise she's closed all the time in her apartment. And it's like that, it's sad. Yeah. Um, but some of them say, but uh, there is also a part of quite a love between the, ca the caretaker really likes her. He is very severe, like I don't do this, but you can feel also that he, he says it's a funny woman, it's a nice woman, you know? But it's, it, yeah, it has, this show has both sides and it's like that in life also. Yes. Uh, that it's the way we treat older person and some put them away. And then it's not always that funny, you know? Um, so it, it was not the purpose because we wanted to talk about Rita and it's not that we started like, let's make an educational uh, show about uh, dementia, demen dementia, dementia, I don't know. That was not the purpose, but it, um, uh, we talked to a lot of person and, and in that situation mm. and then they think it's a good um, uh, rip, uh, start to talk about it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and I think that that thing you're describing of that tilt moment between the sadness and the joy, I think the clips can do capture that really beautifully, that you sort of catch yourself laughing right at a moment that it, it turns and you actually feel a deep sense of sadness for this woman yeah. and her situation. And it's That's maybe, it's maybe good because Randy is now, he, he um, wait, but we have, a, a, I think, a last scene we could show and that's more the sad uh, part uh, that's also in the show that's where she's all alone in the in her house and of course she hears voices and she she panics so she really needs also martino to be there and maybe we have to show also this side of the show so you can feel both uh, ambient atmospheres uh, yes, so yes. maybe Pilar, if you could show the last scene, then you will understand. Uh, yes. Who's over there? Your noises. Nobody. And who's over there? Nobody.
Yes, I think quite important to see that last scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the other side, and but you don't hear it uh, now on Vimeo, but you uh, hear uh, the constantly the sound of um, an annoying sound for her of the I don't know how you say it in English the ke the kettle where you cook some tea in the kettle the whistle of a kettle whistle of the kettle and it's a soundscape and so you don't hear it now but it's always there and that's you know the relation between yeah it's the uh, old people not only old people but they drink tea and they put it on the um, uh, stove i don't know how you say it and then the whistle you hear the whistle of the kettle but they, they don't go. forgot that something was on the stove and it starts the sound starts to lead another life of full of panic in her head but now you didn't hear the sound it, it starts before the scene it starts and so these kind of relations between uh, what's her fantasy what's in her head and ordinary um, ordinary daily uh, movements, that's what we tried to mix. Yes, and, and it, there's an eerie kind of haunting otherworldliness to that, the, the tiny chair and the way the, the light yep. drops down. Um, we are getting some questions, so I want to make sure that we can go yep. over to them. I'm really yep. pleased that you were able to show that last clip because I think it helps us to get a more full sense of the, the darker side of the show. Yep. Um, we have a, a couple of really good questions here from uh, Takeshi Matsumoto, which I'm going to read out now. Um, so the first question is, what do you want to portray by Rita being performed by a male so why the choice around a male performer to play Rita that's the first question um, and uh, there's also a question about how did you make the character of Martino what was that process so maybe a bit more about characterization are you able to speak to that a little bit Bella? yeah 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 um, uh, the first question well it was not a choice to play it by a man it's just that the um, uh, Randy is a performer, choreographer, choreographer, dancer. He plays children, men, women. He plays all kinds of uh, personalities. So it was not a choice. He's, uh, he's the director, the creator, the player. So we didn't think about that. Um, and he, Rita, in the, the first scene, Rita was also... Uh, played by a man and yeah it was not uh, it's maybe strange to say but it was not we didn't think about it yeah. so it's like he's an actor so he can play uh, whatever he wants that was more like and of course you cannot play it by a, an, an older uh, dancer because it's impossible physically yeah um that's that's because yeah, yeah, it's it's the the movements he does when uh, it's impossible to do it uh, with an older person. But the it was not a choice, man. It could have been played by a woman also. It's just that he's the di director and creator of the so of what, the play. So more a statement about. Um not an intentional statement but more just uh, working to the strengths of the performer and the yeah and the yeah it's not a statement it's not at all no no <laughs> and it's how just... about the of martino can you talk a little bit about that that role of the carer and some of the thinking that went into that characterization uh yeah martino that's that's yeah we try to um of course to to it, it, the product, the way we produce is always uh, with improvisations. Eh? There is not a, never a, a script uh, from the beginning. So it's really weeks of improvisation. So we had more, we had like a show of three hours in the beginning with a lot of scenes, different scenes and different situations. Uh, it's more like a, different kinds of caretakers. At the beginning, it was a very... Um, a very hard caretaker. I remember that at the first two rehearsal weeks, it was more like the hard way, and then we said it's not. That's not. That's what not what we want to show. It's more like both sides. So we try to um, to represent a caretaker that has um, that has a lot of love in his, but also a lot of. Um, I don't say, know how you say the name. Prejudice. Prejudice. Yeah. Prejudice. 
Yeah, prejudice. Yeah. That you, a lot of people think, ah, it's an old lady. She cannot do this, that, that, that. You know, that they, without knowing <laughs> yes. the old lady. So, so we tried really to have like um, a multi-layered caretaker. Mm. But we improvised a lot. Um, uh, so and then we tried to yeah we had to cut some scenes and then we tried to have like uh, all, all the aspects of a caretaker but at the end the audience must feel that he that he's uh, yeah he has a good heart but that it's not always the good way to to treat old women mm. it's not it it's not the happy happy end no uh, so you must feel also that sometimes it's 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 quite wrong to do good. <laughs> it's difficult to explain, but you know that he always wants to do to help her, but sometimes it's it feels a little bit wrong. So that uh, yeah. Yes, and I and I think perhaps that explains why some audience members might be sat like that at the end, thinking, "Oh, I, I need to think about this a bit more. This is yeah. thought-provoking stuff." We have a hand raised, I think, at the moment from Elaine. Elaine, do you want to ask your question? Do you want to unmute and ask your question? Have a go. Hello. I'm not sure whether, in fact, it is a question um, so much as a comment. I was one of the people with Hila after the performance in Norway, and um, I thought aesthetically it was very beautiful to watch. Uh, thank you for answering the question on why it was a male playing a female role because that was there but i felt that we left and um away from the performance we had our own q a but actually have you ever done q a's afterwards you said that you've performed to um intergenerational you performed in schools and i just wondered whether not wishing it to be educational because you've got the artistic side as well but whether a Q&A would help explore some of those areas and um, for people who haven't seen it there was a, a beautiful balance between feeling sympathy and um, with um, the caretaker, caretaker and also feeling that he was abuser you know it was a really interesting way of um, depicting the whole concept and raised lots of discussion so thank you for that and actually yeah. Elaine, that, that that fits really nicely against a question we've also got from Skylar in the chat which says what kind of audience interaction or support was there before or after the show I, Bula, is that something that you guys ever tried a bit of yeah 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 uh, we have a, a big uh, educational department it's called studio bronze and so every class that is coming to see our show has a one hour workshop before the show so uh, yeah yeah we have like uh, a lot of uh, yeah workshops uh, around the themes around what they are going to see and also with this show in particularly afterwards so we had a lot of uh, q a's with children with grandparents with um so to talk about uh, the themes and it's very interesting because the children they uh, they um, react very hopefully it's very strange they really love rita and they feel very connected with her and they see martino more as a teacher <laughs> A teacher that is telling the children to do what they can to tell, is telling the children what to do and what not to do yeah. because it's not healthy for them. Um, and that they, they feel also the sadness of being alone and they all, if they all want to go for a walk with Rita. And that's very nice because they all, uh, uh, yeah, felt that, that, um, that older people that they need to take care of older people also to to um, not put them away really to go and for a walk and then sometimes uh, uh, we asked and do you want to visit rita and go with her for a walk in the park and then i think that all the children said yes me 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 and it was um very nice, very nice. They really understand uh, what we wanted to tell. 
but for the parents and the grandparents it's more emotional because they are more involved because of course they have sometimes parents with dementia or parents that are very lonely and and they know sometimes after the show that they are not taking really care of well, yeah it's difficult to say but that they don't spend a lot of time with them and that they maybe don't know if their own parents are lonely or not yeah well and uh, it's really so it's not only about dementia it's also about loneliness mm -hmm. and that's why it's sometimes a, a Com confrontating uh, show <laughs> that you feel in the end like oh my god you know like but that's because it's your private um yeah well and i i just uh, struck that that's extra loaded for us now watching it post the pandemic that these issues have been further exacerbated in the last year yeah. um so I th the show was made in 2018 is that right rita was made in 2018 yeah, so yeah, yeah. we're now watching it after the COVID-19 crisis or the, in, in the midst of the COVID-19 crisis and that just gives it a whole nother layer as well which is um, yeah. that loneliness is worse potentially for a lot of these people. But it's what's funny is it's uh, we perform it now in French also, in Dutch, in German and in English and we are going to play it in Japan normally and it's funny that it's a very universal team. Mm. So we didn't know that, but it's like it's everywhere a problem. Yes, yes. Not we, only dementia, but more maybe more loneliness. Yeah, feels like a very relevant topic at the moment. So, uh, to answer your question, Studio Bronx also developed, a, um, how do you say that, um, educational map brochure exercises to do... Um, uh, around the show before or after yes yes mm. because it's very um, it's it's a show where you can do a lot of stuff you, you can talk about a lot of um, so we do that yeah yeah this it, that's fantastic i'd be really interested to hear more about that workshop yeah. but i want to make sure that we get to some other questions yeah um, i think vicky has her hands up vicky do you want to ask your question go ahead and unmute and let's see if we can hear you uh hello um I don't know if it's a question. I just wanted to say I, I saw this show in Norway and it, it, it was it's one of the best shows I've ever seen in my life, which is quite long. And at the end of it, there was a huge division uh, amongst the audience and which I find very interesting and, and relevant. And I knew uh, sort of maybe why. But I thought in the end, this is for young people. So I ran outside the theatre and um, the Sun Festival had invited young people from across um, the Scandinavian countries and <laughs> I ran after them and said, do you mind, can I just talk to you? Because I, I really want to know what you felt about that show. And uh, I'm just here to say they got it, they loved it, they said they learnt things that they hadn't known. It didn't bother them too hoots that it was a man playing a woman. They mm. saw an artist on stage and I just thought, what a shame that we hadn't listened to those young people's views on the on the piece but people had gone away with maybe very mixed uh, reactions and uh, more i think more we sh maybe we should listen to young audiences uh, a little bit more on and their thoughts on the shows we produce but just well done i absolutely adored it thank you yeah, thank you uh, but it, it's it's strange that yeah it's true what you're telling children uh, teenagers they they don't even think about is it a male they think it's really well done <laughs> and it's a good dancer and and even children they think that it's a woman they don't they don't even see it sometimes so i don't know what the this why they were confused or why it was such a discussion is it only because it was a male playing it or was it also the team of the way we I am. Um, I, I I know it, eh, but I didn't. Mm. I think it was very much about uh, not enough roles for women and a role being played by a man, okay. which was seen as offensive and not necessary. Um, which is because a lot of you know a lot of 
I was fighting for the rights of women. And I can absolutely appreciate that feeling. And, and um, you know, I understand it. But I just saw an artist on the stage. I didn't care what gender they were. I thought they were magnificent. But it was a, a very... Um, I could understand why people reacted like they did. That was the only <laughs> thing. I think they maybe yeah, okay. integrated all the rest of it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, okay. I can understand. But it's, a, uh, yeah, it was not a statement. It's just that Randy loves this character and he wants to perform it as an artist. Yeah. So um, maybe if he gets too old and we are still touring it <laughs> in five years and he, he's physically, he's not able, uh, it could be played by a, uh, by a woman perfectly. Mm -hmm. So that's not the, it could... But now he still uh, likes it too much to play it himself. So, <laughs> uh, but it it could be it could be. So it was not. Um, um, yeah. Mm. Well, we're we're getting close to our time, and I, I need to say yeah. a couple of things here at the end about our Padlet. But could you just speak a little bit, Verla, about have you got any plans for the show? I'm, I know it's a strange moment right now with COVID, but are there any next steps for it that you that you're aware of? uh we you know by touring you mean or yes ah, yeah 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 the next uh, uh we just played in stuttgart and now we are going to the west wind festival in Köln, Cologne, Köln. yeah also yeah. in germany <laughs> we are going to open the festival and then yeah i don't know all the tour dates but we tour a little bit in belgium in france we normally we go to montreal montreal and we try to go to Japan because there was a lot of a big delegation of Japan in Norway, mm. and they really uh, loved it. But it's also maybe because in Japan it's a big uh, team also. Yes. Um, yeah. uh, so uh, I I don't know we we can tour it in a lot of languages. So Martino is now, for some shows, he's replaced by another actor uh, who, is, who speaks a lot of languages. Um, and, and as long as they like to play it, we are going to perform it because it's, it's something universal. And, and we feel that a lot of people have, uh, yeah, they, even if they don't like the show, you feel something. If you if you come out of the show and you can talk about something and yeah, I, I think it's nice. I saw it already twenty five times and it's always also a little bit different. In Norway, it was ten minutes longer than normal, mm. but because I think because of reaction or because it depends, it depends. And it was also a big venue with a lot of adults, it, so it's not always the same because the rhythm changes. Mm -hmm. And if we play it only for schools, it's shorter. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's because the reactions, you know, in the more poetic scenes, Randy feels that if you play for adults, it can get more poetic. If you play for children, you have to watch out for the rhythm. So it's not a show that is like um, <laughs> very fixed or something like that. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's... Uh, that notion of it being international in its scope is really interesting, actually. Takeshi's just put a note in the chat saying that Japan is an aging country, so that that notion about care for elderly relatives would be particularly relevant. I think it's going to be increasingly relevant for us here in the UK as well. Yeah. How, do, how do we care for our elderly is... It's definitely a yeah, pressing, yeah, 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 yeah. pressing question. Oh, Vela, thank you so much. That has been, I just absolutely loved getting a chance to, to take that kind of deep dive into thank your you. practice. <laughs> um, we're going to pop up into the chat, folks, a link to a Padlet. If you've never used Padlet before, do not be scared. It's not hard. Basically, it's going to be a one-stop shop kind of place that you can visit after this conversation today to keep talking, to find out a bit more, to build some connections, um, to join a mailing list to have all sorts of follow-up actions oh look it's there the amazing Hattie's popped it up there um, so please before you leave um, this call could you please make sure that you've clicked on that link go for it now have a little look make sure you can get in okay any problems pop them in the chat for us so we can make sure that everyone's all right in terms of accessing that the big piece of feedback that we received after the last round of getting through the cracks is that people really wanted to be able to pick up the conversations in between the sessions and connect up more with each other and, and build that connectivity for us as a sector i think it's really important and that will only work if we all kind of 
um, to take part in this sort of action right afterwards. So please, please do click on that right now and have a little look. And any problems, don't be shy. Let us know so that we can make sure that you're all all right to get into that. Um, I just wanted to say that we are hosting two more of these events upcoming and hopefully more after that, but the next two are on July 29th, where we are going to have Ross Willis and Sally Cookson, um, who created Wonder Boy at Bristol Old Vic, talking to Theatre Alibi's very own Nikki Sved about their artistic process and I'm going to be coming along to that one as an attendee. I can't wait to hear what they have to say. And then on the 22nd of September, we have Natasha Gilmore from Barrowland Ballet um, talking to Louise Carrega um, about their practice. So please, please do have a look at the link that just magically popped up in the chat and um, do book on for those and spread the word about those. I think these conversations are really important and, and we need to keep them going internationally and, um, and amongst all those of us who are practitioners and researchers in this field. Viola, that has been a joy. Thank you so Thank you. much Thank for you. your insights and your time uh, and coming along we, today. We would like to come and uh, show it at the UK. So when we are... <laughs> Let's make that happen. I, I think it would have a lot of discussions afterwards, but, but we are ready to, to discuss. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. I think it would be so wonderful to see the yeah. kind of dialogic space that might open up in the UK. So let's keep talking about that. Maybe that's a conversation we can pick up in the pad of it. Mm -hmm. um, one last survey has just popped up in the chat. Once you've clicked on the links and you feel comfortable and happy, um, please feel free to sign off and, and go and take part in all those uh, links. Vila and I are going to go ahead and go cameras off, uh, mics off and let folks depart the meeting. Thank you so much, everyone. And thank you to Theatre Alibi. Take care. Bye bye.